Hi, welcome back to presentation on the module for torsion of mechanics of materials. Uh, this is lecture eight. In the previous lecture, we studied some important application based problems and we'll continue in this lecture also some of the very important typical application based problems on the torsion and how to design the shaft when it is subjected to torsion load. Let us take this uh, first problem. A shaft is required to transmit 245 kilowatts per hour running at a speed of 240 RPM. The maximum torque is 1.5 times the mean torque. Shear stress for the material of which the shaft is made is 40 MPa. The angle of twist is restricted to one degree in a length of one meter. Determine the, the shaft diameter. Uh, if the shaft is solid, that is the first case. Second, if the shaft is hollow with external diameter, twice the internal diameter. And modulus of rigidity of the material of which shaft is made is 80 kilonewton per mm square. So here we have, uh, we have to find the diameter of the shaft when it is solid and when it is hollow. And there are two cases in each. When the shaft is solid, you have to design the diameter of the shaft based on the strength, based on rigidity. So totally you have four cases here, two for solid and two for hollow. So let us see how to solve the problem here. First, we'll write the given data. So now you see here, the power transmitted is 245 kilowatts. So converting it to watts, 10 to the power of three, speed 240 RPM. See the maximum torque is 1.5 times the mean torque. Whatever the torque we get from the, the power e transmitted equation, that is mean torque. So this torque is mean torque. So we should design the shaft for maximum torque. And then the shear stress for the material of shaft is 40 MPa, converting it to, so one MPa is one Newton per mm square. So 40 Newton per mm square. So it is always better you write the data, do the conversion, then write the formula and substitute so that you'll not any, make any mistakes in solving the problems. Now the angle of twist is restricted to one degree in a length of one meter. So that is one meter length converted to mm. And the degree is converted into radians pi by 180. So that is 0 0.0174 radians. So now first we need to find the torque to design the shaft or find the diameter of the shaft. So power transmitted equation is 2 pi nt by 60 watts. So we want the torque transmitted here. So writing the equation for torque, torque is equal to P into 60 by 2 pi n. So we know that power in watts is 245 into 10 to the power of three into 60 divided by two pi, speed is 240 RPM. So from this equation, we'll get the, the mean torque. So in terms of Newton meters, that is 974.82 Newton meters. So since all the values of stresses are stresses and uh, this modulus of rigidity are in millimeters. So we'll take the value of mean torque in Newton millimeters by converting from meters to millimeters. So now we have the mean torque here. So the maximum torque is 1.5 times the mean torque. So we need to design for the maximum torque. So multiply by 1.5, so we'll get the maximum torque transmitted by the shaft. <clears throat> so for this torque, we need to find the diameter. So there are two cases, as I told. One is, first for the solid shaft, we need to find the diameter based on strength. So based on strength, we are considering the first part of the torsion equation, that is T by J is equal to tau by R. In other words, T maximum by J is polar moment of inertia. For solid shaft, is it is pi by 32, D to the power four. And then shear stress, R is the radius, that is D by two here diameter by two. So rewriting the equation, T max into 32, 32 goes up, pi into tau into uh, two. So you'll get the value of D cube. If you, upon substituting the value of this P max shear stress, we'll get the value of D that is 123 mm. 
So this is the diameter of the shaft obtained based on the strength as the criteria. Similarly, we need to find based on the rigidity or stiffness as the criteria. Now see here, in the second case, for the same solid shaft, we need to find the diameter based on the rigidity as the criteria, okay? For that, we'll use the second part of the torsion equation, T by J is equal to G theta by L, where G is the modulus of rigidity, theta is angle of twist, and L is length of the shaft. So again, we have to consider the maximum torque only. This is pi by 32 D4 for the modulus of uh, this uh, polar moment of inertia. And then after substituting the values of G, theta in radians and length, so we'll get the value of diameter as 1.7 mm. So the larger of these two value is to be adopted as the diameter of the solid shaft. Now coming to the next one, that is hollow shaft. In case of hollow shaft, we have two diameters. One is outside diameter and another is inside diameter. So it is given that the outside diameter is twice the inside diameter. So taking the ratio, small d by capital D is half, that is 0.5. So that is k is equal to 0.5. We have the values. Then again, first considering the strength as the basis, we have T by J is equal to tau by R. So T here represents the maximum torque divided by the polar moment of inertia for hollow shaft is pi by 32 into D to the power four minus D to the power four. And this is outside diameter by two, R is equal to D by two. So rearranging the equation and substituting the values, if you take common here, D to the power four, this is the easier method of solving the problem. So we'll get the ratio D by D, which we can solve here, 0.5. So substituting the values of torque, shear stress, and D by D ratio, we'll get the outside diameter of the hollow shaft, that is 125.6 mm. <clears throat> so we know that inside diameter is 0.5 times outside diameter. So we'll get the value as 62.8 mm. So now like this, you can find the the, you can design the hollow shaft for its outside diameter and inside diameter based on strength as the criteria. Similarly, based on rigidity as criteria, we can find the, write the equation T by J is equal to G theta by L. So this is maximum torque by, again, for hollow shaft, we have pi by 32 outside diameter to the power four minus inside diameter to the power four G theta by L. So, and rearranging the equation, so we have here T max into 32 into L divided by pi into G into eight. Again, D fourth is taken common. So we'll get one minus D to the power four by D to the power four, which is 0.5. So upon substituting the values of torque and then length one meter, that is thousand mm, G is 18 to 10 to the power of three and angle of twist in radians. So from this, we can solve for the equation, the outside diameter, that is 103.2 mm. And inside diameter is half the outside diameter, that is 51.767 mm. So you can adopt the larger value of the diameters out of the two that is based on strength and based on the rigidity as the criteria. So this is very important problem on uh, the designing the solid shaft and hollow shaft. Okay, coming to the next problem, a solid circular shaft, 40 mm diameter is applied with a torque of one kilo Newton meters. Okay, determine the shear stress induced. He has given three points. One is at the center of the shaft and at a point 10 mm away from the center. And the last one is at the outermost surface, at the outer surface or the outer, outermost layer of the shaft. So finding the shear stress is the requirement of this problem. And also you need to draw the sketch showing the distribution of shear stress, how the, the shear stress varies from the center of the shaft to the outside surface. And also he says, you need to discuss the results. Okay, so important problem. So now let us write the given values first. It is a solid circular shaft. 
having diameter 40 mm then torque is 1 kN so convert it into kN to Newton and also from meters to millimeters so we'll have 1 into 10 to the power of 6 Newton millimeters so we need to find the short the shear stress at three points at the center 10 mm away from the center and at the outer surface so first let us write the torsion equation since angle of twist is not given we are only taking the first part of the equation t by j is equal to tau by r t is the torque g is the polar moment of inertia tau is the shear stress and r is the radius first let us find the shear stress at the center that is r is equal to 0 so if you substitute the value of 0 then you'll get the shear stress as 0 okay so that means that the shear stress at the center of the shaft is equal to 0 let us see at the other two points the shear stress at 10 mm away from the away from the, the center of the shaft so r is equal to 10 mm okay now writing the equation again tau is equal to t by j into r then you have the torque 1 into 10 to the power of 6 newton millimeters and then j for solid shaft pi by 32 d fourth into radius 10 10 mm so that you can see 10 mm from the center of the shaft so you'll get the value of shear stress as 39.7 newton per mm square okay similarly shear stress at the outer surface at the outer surface the radius is you can see 20 mm in this diagram you can see it is 20 mm so at 20 mm the when you substitute the value of 20 here the other value is remaining the same you will get the shear stress as 79.6 okay so writing the summary here shear stress at the center is 0 at uh, radius at uh, distance 10 39.7 newton per mm square and at outer surface 79.6 newton per mm square so you can sketch the distribution also you have three values here so this you can see the shaft front view in the side you can see so this is the center of the shaft 10 mm away from the shaft and 20 mm from the center okay so at the center the value is zero and at 10 mm the value is 39.8 newton per mm square so you can show the height with the height here you can mark a point here second point third point is at distance 20 mm that is outermost layer the value is 79.6 so that will be uh, somewhere here okay so if you join all these three points through a straight line and extend it back so that is the distribution of shear stress from the center of the shaft to the external fiber okay so now what are the results that we can draw here from this problem is shear stress induced at any point is linearly proportional to its distance from the center so you take go, go to any distance from the center the, the variation of the shear stress is remains the remains uniform okay the second observation is shear stress induced is maximum at the outer surface of the shaft which will be maximum at the outer surface and shear stress is always zero at the center of the shaft so center of the shaft will not experience any shear stress whereas at the outer surface the maximum shear stress can be seen <clears throat> now let us see one more problem important problem a solid shaft has a diameter of 50 mm determine the inside and outside diameter so that means it is a hollow shaft so a solid shaft is there but you need to find the inside and outside diameter of a hollow shaft if area of cross section of hollow shaft is same as that of solid shaft. So there are two shafts here. One is solid shaft with 50 mm diameter. Another is uh, the hollow shaft with area of cross section of hollow and solid shaft remaining the same. The inner diameter of the hollow shaft is 0.8 times the outside diameter. Compare the torsional strength and torsional stiffness of both the shafts if solid and hollow shafts are of same length and are made up of the same material okay so let us write the values here first given values so the diameter of the solid shaft we can take it as ds capital ds 50 mm and for all hollow shaft dh 
which we do, we, we need to find. And inside diameter of the hollow shaft, small dh also to be found out. But we have the relation here. So small inside diameter of the hollow shaft is 0.8 times the outside diameter. Now, we can write the equation area of the solid shaft is equal to area of the hollow shaft. This is given in the problem, cross section area of solid shaft and hollow shaft are same. So writing the equation for the area pi by four, ds square is equal to pi by four, dh square minus small dh square. So substituting, we know the value of the diameter of the solid shaft, 50 square is equal to dh square and we have the relation small dh is 0.8 times outside diameter. So when we substitute this, we can find the value of, there is only one unknown here. So we can find the diameter of the, outside diameter of the hollow shaft as 83.3 millimeters. So the inside diameter we can find by multiplying by 0.8 into 83.3, that is 66.6 .6 millimeters is the inside diameter. So these are the diameters of the, the hollow shaft outside and inside diameter. Now, in this, in this problem, it is also asked to find, compare the torsional strength of both the shafts. Let us see what is torsional strength. From the torsion equation, T by J is equal to tau by R. If I take the ratio T by tau, now this ratio is called as torsional strength. The ratio of torque to shear stress is called as torsional strength. And for solid shaft, if I take, the equation is pi by 32 ds to the power four is equal to ds by two, okay? So now, now this equation reduces to pi by 16 into ds cube. Similarly, for hollow shaft, t by tau is equal to, t by tau is equal to j by r, j is pi by 32, for hollow shaft it is d fourth minus d four divided by dh by two, r is equal to dh by two. So now we'll get the equation pi by 16, dh fourth minus dh fourth by dh. So we have two equations, that is ratio of tau, t by tau, that is torsional strength of solid shaft, torsional strength of hollow shaft. Now to compare the torsional strength of the both, I'll take the ratio torsional strength of hollow shaft divided by torsional strength of the solid shaft is equal to the ratio of these two. So, uh, which I'll get as, you can see, substituting the values, the diameters, outside diameter, inside diameter, divided by outside diameter, and this is the diameter of the solid shaft. So, this values will get the ratio as 2.73. So, that means, the torsional strength of a hollow shaft is two. So that means the torsional strength of hollow shaft is 2.73 times that of solid shaft. Now let us compare the torsional stiffness. Torsional stiffness is defined as the ratio of T by J is equal to G theta by L from the torsion equation. If I take the term T by theta, T by theta, then I'll get the ratio as G, G into J by L. So this ratio is called as torsional stiffness. So the torsional stiffness for hollow by torsional stiffness of solid can be taken as G, J by L for hollow divided by G, J by L for solid. Now, already the condition given that length of hollow shaft and solid shafts are same and they are made of same material so that the modulus of rigidity is also same. So taking this, if I substitute the values, uh, if I cancel out the remaining these things, we'll get the polar moment of inertia for hollow divided by polar moment of inertia for solid shaft. So writing the equations pi by 32, d fourth minus d fourth divided by pi, pi by 32, ds fourth, diameter of the solid shaft. So upon substituting the values of the diameters, I'll get the ratio as 4.6. So that indicates that the torsional stiffness 
of hollow shaft is 4.6 times that of a solid shaft. So that concludes that hollow shaft is having more strength and stiffness than the solid shaft.